today I'm gonna show you this tutorial which I guess is a bath demon. So this is my third collaboration with Goldie Starling. You can see our other two collaborations on her channel. I'll link them here. So I got all of my products for this video from Friends Beauty in LA and they did give me about half of them for the tutorial which is super nice of them. So, so thank you so much. I do appreciate it. And just being in a makeup store this big because I'm I'm from Australia obviously. I've never been in a makeup store this big before and it blew my freaking mind and it made me really want to move to LA. And I also got a lot of footage. I thought maybe I could make a video about hanging out and talking about different products, but I'm not sure how good the audio is. So let me know if that is something you'd like to see and I'll check out the audio and see if I can salvage much from it. <laughs> so now we change location into Angie's apartment and she had these really cool perspex, like clear boards that we were sculpting on. So we took like a basic outline of my face shape using cling film and permanent markers and then put that onto some white paper and put that underneath the board. So we can get a rough idea about how big my face is and what kind of shapes will fit without having my actual life there. We had a bunch of different reference images that we wanted to try to combine so there were some creepy scars, there were some creepy like sunken eyelids. So we have one board in the background here where we're sculpting the scars and the wounds and all that and then we had the second board where we sculpted the sunken in eyes and the nose. And we kept exchanging the boards between each other both having a go at sculpting it so it very much was a collaborative process. Next we made some pretty quick walls with some water-based clay around the outside of the sculpt and then poured in some Platzel Gel 10 to make a silicon flat mold. We decided to make both of them just one big mold and then cut the silicon up into individual pieces afterwards. So we cleaned out the clay, we cut them into individual molds. If there are any silicon edges that were a bit higher, we just cut them flat again. So for the cat plastic at Angie's house, we diluted Super Baldi's cat plastic 50-50 with isopropyl alcohol and just hand painted it on. And then we filled it with skin tight, but I had a bit of trouble the skin tight was setting too quickly. So we didn't end up pulling out any really great appliances from this first run. So what I did is I took those pieces home to Australia and then I had a second go using my airbrush to spray on the cat plastic, which usually gets them more even coverage and you can get them out of the molds a bit easier as it doesn't disturb the release layer as much. But you do definitely need to wear a respirator and do this outside. And then I filled them with Platzel Gel 10 and Deadener, which works a lot better for me than the skin tight did. I did them quite soft. I think it was about 180 or maybe 170 or 180 percent Deadener. If you're new to silicon molding and you're a bit like, what the hell does this mean? I'll link other videos here where I go through the process a bit more thoroughly. So now for application time, I used Prosade adhesive to glue my eyebrows flat before I put down the eye pieces. I used Prozite adhesive on the back of these pieces and once it had dried clear I started positioning and applying the pieces onto my face. The cap plastic that I used is also super bodies which means that I can dissolve these cap plastic edges with alcohol. I ended up using the Skin Illustrator Activator as it's a mix of alcohol and ethanol which makes it a lot less fumy and a lot less irritating around the eyes. So you still want to have just a very small amount in the cotton tip so it can't drip but I found this experience a lot nicer to blend out the cap plastic than pure eyes or proper alcohol. Once I blended out both of those eye pieces, I moved on to the nose piece, again using Prosade to apply it, and then using isopropyl alcohol to blend out the edges. Next came the lip pieces, and again, the exact same process. Then I did a big gnarly scar on my left cheek. And then a cut on the forehead and a cut to the chin to finish it off. So because I'm going to be wearing this look in a bathtub in a lot of liquid, I wanted to put a lot of Prosade creamy adhesive around the outside of these just to make sure that they would stick down on my face and not have too much water get underneath them. So ideally in a water-based situation, Prosade transfers will hold up to water a lot better. And these are really thin appliances, so they would have been really nice as Prosade pieces. But the reason I used silicon is because I needed these prosthetics to come out fast. I wanted to run them and apply them in the same day, which you can't do with Prosade transfers. Despite putting down all of this creamy adhesive, some of the pieces did float off a little bit in the bathtub, but because they were so thin, it kind of looked cool. It was like my skin was floating off and decaying a little bit. So this was an unplanned happy accident, much like my mum's pregnancy with me. No, I'm just kidding. My pregnancy was totally planned. My brothers and sisters, however. Next, I went in with a cream anti-shine just to take off some of that shine from both the silicon and from the Prozade cream. Now to get myself nice and dead looking, I'm going to use a light shade of Skin Illustrator. This is Skin Illustrator liquid and rice paper over my whole face and neck. Next I mixed up a custom colour from some of the shades in the grunge palette to get this cool toned contour light brown. I went in and emphasised my cheekbones, the hollows of the temples, around the base of my nose, around the eyes, around those lip appliances, and then down over the neck as well.
Now I'm going to use a technique which I saw Mike McCash and Adrian Rigby use on their Monster Palooza demo. So with their airbrush they just flooded this colour onto the face until it was dripping and then they dabbed it with a paper towel and it left this really cool effect on the skin. So again I'm using a custom mix of colours from the Grunge palette and just absolutely blasting it onto my face with my airbrush and then patting it away with a paper towel. So most of the industry professionals will use an airbrush to paint. Nobody really uses a brush apart from little tiny details. So I am going to try and get better at airbrushing everything. Now using a lighter shade of Skin Illustrator, I'm just going to go back over the highlight points just to make those stand out a bit more if I feel like they got a bit lost in all of the grunge. I'm going to add a little bit of pink to the inside of those wounds. Um, this is a mix of pinks from the Complexions palette. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of Blood Red from the Effects palette. And then to dirty it up and make it look like it's in tune with the rest of my face, I'm going to add a little bit more of the grungy colours from the Grunge palette. And again, you can get that drippy effect just by loading up your brush with alcohol and colours. Just make sure you don't drip it into your eyes because that would be a very horrible place to find yourself in. So I've got those grungy colours in, I'm just going to soften them a little bit and bring back a tiny bit more pink by using an isopropyl alcohol damped cotton tip and just removing that surface layer of colour. I'm just going to add a little bit more contrast to the lips now as well using a hand painted brush. And you can see the lines are quite harsh when you use a brush, so I'm going to use this fluffy watercolour brush that is clean, it just has alcohol on it, just to soften those lines. Next I'm going to continue that paint scheme down my shoulders and arms so that when I'm in the bath it's not just my face that is painted. And now for around the eyes I'm going to use a cream makeup colour from the Ben Nye FX palette. You can see I'm having a little bit of trouble blending the colour evenly so I'm going to get a little bit of water on my finger and blend that out. Now that I've got my base paint job done, I'm going to go in and add some veins. So I'm going to airbrush the Skin Illustrator capillaries colour. And now I'm going to put in some dental distortion teeth. And then I'm going to wet my hair and just pull it all back. Once that is done, the final touches is putting just a little bit of aged blood into those wounds. I love before and afters. The power of makeup, am I right? So to make the bath water black, I literally just mixed up a bunch of food coloring and put it into the tub as most bath bombs are just food coloring. And I did make sure that it wasn't going to stain me or the tub first, even despite its opaque coloring, which was a surprise. So because I knew I wanted to be going underneath water and emerging, I couldn't put contact lenses in as the water would just wash them out of my eyes. For this effect, I photoshopped to make my slurs black, and for the video side, I used After Effects to add in black slurs. Which is also what they would do in the film industry if you were required to go underwater, but they also wanted your eyes to look different. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this. I really did enjoy doing this. It's cool to work with other people. I had a lot of fun working with Angie. And to make something that's not gory but is more creepy and more of a full character was also really fun. I'll have to do more of that in the future. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, you can subscribe here and I'll be putting up new videos shortly. Thanks for watching. Bye.